hey, I forgot to record it in class again. So I'm going to kind of just try to do a quick rundown of what we talked about in class so that you still get that information, um, even if you were absent. So um, what we're going to, what we talked about today was 1920s uh, racial cultures that were happening in the 20s. Um, we've got two main groups. We've got uh, blacks in Harlem and then whites in the KKK um, specifically. Um, let's first talk about Harlem Renaissance. Uh, part of our homework from last week was to do this assignment called Whites Invade Harlem. Um, this is an assignment that's basically talking about Harlem is a city in New York that all these blacks are starting to move to because they know that that's a place where they can have a community for themselves and to showcase and really use their strengths and talents to showcase black culture, black art, black literature, black poetry, black music, black style, you know, everything that's black, black is beautiful was a common saying in Harlem, just to um, be proud of, of their black culture, their black communities. So, um, you know, they would go up to, to Harlem and they would live there and um, a lot of whites would, as in the assignment, hopefully you've done it already, um, they would come down to this to Harlem and they'd, they'd see the, the blacks doing their, their art and their culture and they'd say, oh, wow, that's amazing. I didn't know you could do art. Basically similar to the way that we would look at a dog that's dancing, like, oh my gosh, a dog is dancing. That's crazy. Um, they had the same reaction to blacks who could sing or blacks who could, you know, write poetry or write books or like, oh my gosh, I know you could write, that's crazy. So um, that's the sort of reaction that they had. So blacks were starting to improve their status, but at the same time, whites were starting to feel resentful and push, try to push them back down. Part of our uh, PowerPoint that we were looking at last week was about white resentment and how they hated how, well, some whites, I'm not saying all whites, um, but a lot of whites, I would say the vast majority of whites still at this time were very much racist. Um, they were very sad. They were very angry um, that blacks were just raising their status and they wanted to push it back down. So the KKK was at its most powerful, most, uh, most people in the group. Um, they were doing things like changing the lyrics of songs to promote their group. Um, for instance, if you've heard the battle hymn um, song, it's a Christian song. Um, the, the chorus of it, you may, a lot of people recognize it today. You may rec recognize it. The chorus goes something like, uh, um, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. And at the end it's like, while God is marching on, that's pretty much the chorus, you know, part, most of it. So they took the lyrics to songs like that and they would change it to promote the KKK, like the Klansmen, Klansmen are marching on. Um, We'll show our truth and free everybody and our bravery and that we're, uh, we're, we're amazing. And basically they just changed the lyrics to support the KKK. And they would sing them at, at their rallies and at their uh, parties and stuff. And so that helped them promote for more members to come in. Um, and so most, like I mentioned last week, most KKK members were not violent. Um, however, the ones who were violent, they basically were the police state of the Democrat Party. Now, the Democrat Party is not the same party as it used to be. The Democrat Party today is now, um, you know, very different than what they were. But at that time, the Democrat, Democrat Party was mostly white supremacist and racist. And the KKK were basically the ones to enforce the Democrat Party wishes and what they thought was pure and good and keep away the bad, basically. Um, so that's why that's, you know, their purpose, if you will, as, as they saw them. Um, part of how uh, the Black Renaissance or the Harlem Renaissance was growing was that in certain towns, like one in Oklahoma, so here's, um, here's a, there's a town and in the middle of the town, there's some wonderful railroad tracks. You guys like my railroad tracks is separated. So this part of the town is the white part of the town. This part of the town is the black part of the town. And um, they had a particular street in the black part of town that they call Black Wall Street. Now they call it Black Wall Street because they were making 
a lot of money. They were doing really well for themselves. In fact, the people who had businesses along Black Wall Street were more wealthy than people on the white side of the town. So the people who were on the white side uh, of town, they started becoming angry and resentful of how successful these Blacks were in Tulsa. And they were starting to be so successful because lots of Blacks, they heard about what's going on in Tulsa. They said, hey, I can move there and make something for myself. My family, I can have a career. I can make, I can have a good life for my family. So I'm going to move there. So the Black community is just really starting to boom and really grow. It's it's amazing. It's the, probably um, the best economically Black-centered area in the history of the United States. That's how you know well off they were. Um, so they had a portion of the town right here that was basically the rich part of the Blacks. And these were like the doctors, lawyers, um, you know, the rich of the rich, basically. And they had a lot of business with white people. Um, that's important later. So basically what happened you know, one day in 1921 is this resentment that the whites were having and jealousy was just growing and growing at how successful these guys were. They're like, that's supposed to be us. Why are you being successful? So they cross the railroad tracks and they start going through the streets and they start, um, they have what we call the Tulsa race massacre. They are plundering and raiding businesses. They're destroying homes, burning them, uh, wrecking them to the ground. They actually brought in, you know, machinery, machinery and equipment to knock down buildings and to burn them. And they went to homes and stole things from them and businesses and destroyed and stole. Um, they basically laid waste to the town and they murdered people all along the way. Um, there's, there's some horrible stories that I, um, I shared some in class, but um, I can share some with you later if you if you want to hear more, it's a, it's a really sad story. They did not go to the rich part of the town and that's because, because they had a lot of uh, business connections, they needed them still. So they didn't want them to die or, or lose their business. So they, you know, cut that out. But um, some people think that they just haven't gotten to them yet. So it could be either way. We don't really know why. And those are the two theories. One of them is true, or maybe both of them is true. Um, but it was such a horrible day. Um, because of the, the theft and the brutality, the destruction. It was riots in the street, guys. So think of what's been going on with the Capitol and all summer long with riots. It was worse than that, okay? But that is actually a really good visual description of what happened in Tulsa, except for it was like the other way around, basically. Um, whites were the ones who are doing the destruction, solely the whites. No black was part of the destruction. They were only the victims in this uh, instance. Um, so this is actually even the first day, first time in history that, um, American people were attacked by the air, by, by airplanes. They had, they were dropping bombs on people. Um, that's, that's how crazy this went. They were dropping bombs on people. Again, first time in American history that people have been attacked from the air by airplane. So uh, this Tulsa race massacre is one of the worst things that have happened because of the race riots and, and all the tensions. There were riots in other cities, but not near as bad as this. This was the worst by far. So things like this is, um, shows the, the tensions that were happening with racial structures in the 1920s. Um, and even part of their uh, of KKK culture because Tulsa Race Massacre was largely instigated by the KKK. Um, part of what the KKK also did was they produced this movie called The Birth of a Nation. And in this movie, they basically show what would be happening if Blacks were able to rise to power. Okay, so um, here's this first clip we're gonna watch that kind of talks about that too, that shows this shows what would happen if blacks were in Congress being our lawmakers, our legislatures, and what kind of laws they would have.
So as you can see in that one, um, it really shows, there we go. It shows like very, um, shows very racist and stereotypical things of what they think, oh, if the blacks were in power, this is the kind of stuff they would do. Um, just the people at the time were very against, uh, or many racist whites were very against um, blacks having any sort of power, any sort of leadership because they thought, oh, they're not capable of being good and having good leadership. So that's where that clip came from. So we're gonna look at another clip from this movie. And this clip, um, we'll just show like what also what the thing is, what they could do with their power. They were ever able to get in charge. I really don't know why she's laughing. So you can see, oh, Confederates, they're, they're the ones who should have won the war is what, you know, they thought. And um, they're just rescuing people from the destructiveness and horrible things that uh, the Blacks are going to do if they're, you know, get their way. Um, here's another one we're going to watch. And, and pay attention to some of the people that you can see that kind of look like clowns. They're definitely in blackface. to rescue them from horrible people. So again, showing like this victorious scene at the end where um, they come in and they're the, they're the saviors of, of them. And 
Uh, this is a very uh, stereotypical and racist movie, um, it, but it, it shows us how the KKK believed them to themselves and it shows us, shows us how they believed in people who were Blacks or what they believed of people who were Black. Um, the worst part about this movie is that it was shown in the White House. Our very own president, Woodrow Wilson, showed this in the White House in 1915. Um, there's really not really much to, you know, that one can say about that, about the fact that such a racist movie was shown in the White House, but it's not surprising though, um, to me, knowing, knowing how, how uh, dominant racist whites were at the time. Um, the, the whites who were not racist were definitely overwhelmed by the ones who were, there's definitely more who were racist than, than not. And it, and it shows, it shows. So um, this is how bad it, it, it was, you know, that's how much people did not like blacks. Um, and it's interesting, my, my first thought would have been like, why, do, why are there real black people in this movie? Well, you know, money talks. You're gonna be offered money to play in this movie. Hey, you know, it's something. It means food on the table. I get made fun of, but it's food on the table. Um, but again, like I talked about last week, um, most of the prominent actors are white and black based. They're, they don't have prominent, you know, main characters are not in black. So um, that's pretty much it for today. Um, we, we talked about some other things, but those are the main points that I want you to get, for sure. So if you did not turn in the Roaring Twenty Station assignment and your White Spade Harlem assignment, make sure you get that in because those are due today. So if you didn't get them in, they're a little late. So get that in as soon as possible. Um, tomorrow is our fun day where we're going to be dancing and dressing up as 20s if you want extra credit. And we'll talk about some other things tomorrow as well. So, um, yeah. That's it for today. Make sure you answer the question, send the video, or else I can't give you credit for class today.